Hi, Dave here from the Dads, Harris and Dave. Well, today we're going to be making meatloaf. I tell you what, I don't know if you're a fan of meatloaf like I am, but I really appreciate a good meatloaf. This recipe that we're going to do here today is not exactly a simple, quick, throw-together meatloaf, but it is certainly worth the effort. I have been working on many different meatloaf recipes, and I've decided this one is my favorite, and we're going to share it with you today. All right, so we're going to start out. I've got some butter. Got um, a good tablespoon of that already melted down here in the skillet. It should be up to bubbling. It was hot a moment ago. I'm going to take a cup of onion, which is a, a good medium onion, and I'm going to so start sweating that and sauteing that down with a half a cup of celery, chopped celery. Chopped it rather fine. It's about a rib, rib and a half of celery, depending on the size of your stocks. We're going to get that started here in my butter. I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit of fresh kosher salt just to help get that started and going. We're going to let that go for a little bit, probably about five, six minutes until that's good and soft. While that is working over here, turn my heat down to about a medium, medium high. Over here, we are going to begin to work together our meatloaf mixture. I need my recipe because my memory is not real good and remembering all the details. Um, what I like to use is the meatloaf pack, where you're buying the pack of the beef, the veal, and the pork. Um, I find it really helps give you the texture. If you just use all ground beef by itself, I find the meatloaf becomes very dense and heavy. Um, I think adding the pork adds that little bit of extra fatty texture to it. The veal, I think, really gives that real depth of flavor. And it also has the gelatin in the veal itself, which helps hold the moisture into your meatloaf. I'm told that if you also can't get the veal, you can also put a little bit of gelatin. I've not tried that one yet, but that's what I was told. That'll really help in replacing that. So I've already got that here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to oops, mix together my, in a bowl here my soy sauce. I'm going to put a tablespoon of soy sauce. And I've got some Dijon mustard here set aside. I'm going to put my Dijon mustard in. Good tea helping teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And I need a whisk. Oops, do this little jug while I'm over here as far as that goes. I'm going to whisk this together, and let's see, I'm also going to put into that, let me see. I'm going to put in my two eggs. The reason why I'm really working this out of here is because I don't want to overwork and process the meat itself. So I'm really going to let these come together, and let's see. I've already put together my saltine crackers and how much I've, I've got about two-thirds of a cup of saltine crackers I've already crushed and that's going to absorb into all that liquid and I've also got a couple of good helping teaspoons of some fresh parsley mix this together and then I'm also going to add some chicken stock to that And right here I have two-thirds, not two-thirds, I'm sorry, uh, a half a cup of chicken stock. I can never rely on my memory to remember all the ingredients I'm doing, so forgive me when you catch me looking down at the recipe. Um, and there we got that together. Right, we're just going to let that sit and get happy while I can combine the rest of these ingredients over here. As this cooks down, I want to let that sweat. I'm going to then um, add to it, I've got already a nice large clove of garlic. I have a teaspoon of paprika and some fresh thyme from the garden. Actually, I have what, two teaspoons of thyme here from the garden. 
and we're going to add that to that in just a minute. I'll tell you what, I am going to step a little bit out of order. I like to let this all cook down because I'm also going to let this then reduce down with some um, V8 tomato juice. And then I pour that into my meat mixture and add the rest. But I don't see any problem in going a little bit out of order so we can save time for the film here. I'm going to go ahead and begin to incorporate this mixture that we've made up into my beef and pork and veal mixture. And we'll just add the other ingredients later as they cook down. You'll notice over here I've already prepared um, a baking sheet for it to go on. And this is not really just um, a baking sheet by itself. What I've actually done is I took one of my cooling racks for cookies um, and I put that on top and you'll see it has the feet and that's why I did this. And then I covered that with some aluminum foil but I poked holes. And why I'm actually doing that is I'm raising the meatloaf up out of the oil so the oils that can drip out of it go onto the baking sheet itself and it'll actually produce a much nicer meatloaf. We're just going to let that slowly come together there. Check on the rest of my ingredients over here. These are still not ready yet. And I don't want to put in my herbs just yet because I want them to cook, but I don't want them to actually overcook. These are going to take a moment to soften up here. those go for a little bit longer then we're going to um, cook it down. All right, I'll tell you what, let me finish sauteing these and we'll be right back. Okay, about five to six minutes has gone by. Now you'll see the onions and celery are getting to be exactly where I want. You're starting to get that brown color to them, okay? So what I'm going to actually do is pull back a little side here so my herbs and all can get to the actual pan itself. I'm going to put in my garlic. And you'll know that will start to just all of a sudden open up. It'll like blossom on you, become very fragrant. I'm going to add the paprika to that as well. And my fresh thyme. This will allow the herbs to actually cook in so they don't have that raw smell and taste to them. I'll let them cook here for a minute on their own. Let them open up. And then I'm going to mix them in to the mixture itself. They'll become nice and married and happy. As that gets going, it's about a minute. You should be able to get that nice smell of the herbs. I can smell the thyme actually. This thyme smells really great. All right, then I'm going to add my V8 tomato juice. In this case, I actually chose a spicy hot because I like a little bit of heat to mine. I've already taken some out of the can. I know I've got about my two ounces of tomato juice there. And that is just going to now cook down on a medium heat until that actually reduces and there'll be none of the tomato juice itself there left. All right, while that does that, I'm going to move that over to my burner here in the front and let that continue. And I'm going to move to the front burner and pan I've got ready this here, so it stays at about the same temperature and let that cook down. I'm going to now prepare the sauce that's going to go on the top of the meatloaf. You know, a lot of folks like to take and put that on part way through the cooking. I put it on right in the beginning. I think it comes out great and it really cooks down itself and almost becomes caramelized on top. All right, so we're going to start out with a ketchup base to that. I have here a half a cup of ketchup already measured out. I have a quarter cup of oops, get all that out of there. quarter cup of some cider vinegar, which will give you that nice little tartness to it. A little bit of some brown sugar. I have three tablespoons of brown sugar, and I'm gonna, depending on the amount of heat you want to have, I'm going to use a little bit of Tabasco or any hot sauce, your favorite hot sauce. In this case, I'm going to give it a, a nice little shake up. Of some Tabasco and I'm going to let this cook down and reduce and we're going to have a great glaze for the top of our meatloaf. Okay. Meanwhile this is continuing to cook over here. I'm going to let that go for a little bit. 
I did not realize, oh, I do need to put some coriander in my um, glaze, seeing that it's out, that's why I do that. A half a teaspoon of coriander, and that's a quarter teaspoon that's out, I need a half a teaspoon. Coriander just gives that other little bit of depth and warmth to it itself. Delightful flavor. Just sure to mix that in. So our glaze is going and reducing. We have our meat mixture over here. I just need to add some salt and pepper to that for flavor. So this is already reducing. My liquid's almost gone. As soon as that's gone, I'm going to put that into my meat mixture over here. Let's go and put some salt and pepper into this. Remember, I've already combined this together. I want to put a good little helping, almost a half a teaspoon probably, of some salt to that. You can vary that depending on your taste. You actually have two pounds of meat here, so that little bit of salt, while it seems like a lot, is not going to hurt you. Same thing with the ground pepper. I think I'd like to have some a little bit more coarse. I'm just going to grab my other pepper mill going here. I have a nice big heavy duty grinder one. There we go, get a nice coarse grinder pepper because I do like to have the taste of black pepper in mine. Okay, it's all coming together nicely. You can see my glaze here has come together very well. I'm going to reduce the heat on that. That is really just about how I want that to be for my topping. So, while the rest of this prepares, now you notice, see how most of the liquid is evaporated out of this. We've reduced it down. This is just about ready to go into my meatloaf mixture itself. And this is just going to add the extra freshness. You'll be able to taste the herbs and the onion and the celery all inside of that mixture. Of the meat left we've got going and it's just going to be delightful. I know as I said this is not your ordinary meatloaf recipe. Put this right into here but you are going to love it. If you try this you won't want to go back to doing the traditional you used to know. All right I'm just going to incorporate this into the rest of my mixture now. Give that a nice little incorporation. And I'm going to form this into a nice loaf, and then we're going to put the glaze on top. I know. I wish this could be a whole lot quicker. I wish I had time-lapse photography and everything else I could show up to you more quickly. It does take a little bit of time. We are now ready to actually form this into our loaf. Bear with me one second. Make sure my hands are extra clean. Give them a quick little wash one more time. And then we are going to be ready to form that into our loaf. Glaze it and put it into our oven because our oven has already been preheated to 375 degrees. Okay. Pull it out of here. We're just going to put it right into our rack. Going. And I don't like to make my meatloaf too thick because it's going to cook a little more quickly this way. It's going to spread out for more of that glaze. But, you're going to make, as you're forming this together, you're actually taking some of the air of it out. I form it so I actually have almost like a well in the middle, because I like to have that glaze form and stay in the top of it. And it'll start to run out down the sides, which is great what I want, but I want enough to be able to stay on the top, okay? Want it to be pretty much an even consistency as far as thickness goes all the way around so that it cooks evenly in your oven. Okay, that's about how I want it there. And we are ready to put the glaze on and get it into the oven. Okay. And our glaze is definitely perfect, just exactly as we want it. Mmm, that cider vinegar and all in there, whew. Smells delightful. I can smell the hot sauce. All the aromatics are amazing. And this would be really good, of course, served with some good old-fashioned mashed potatoes. 
Um, I think tonight we're going to actually do quinoa because we've really developed quite a taste for that. You can see, made a nice little pool of that on top. Came out perfect. And we are ready to put this into the oven and away it goes. Again, 375 degree oven. I put it on the middle rack. Just set it and you're good to go. And cooking time is going to vary. Um, I find while it's going to depend on the thickness of your meat, um, I say 55 minutes, but really in about 40 minutes I start checking internal temperature um, because sometimes it will quick cook up more quickly for you. Alright, so we will be back in about 40 minutes. Thanks. Okay. We've just taken the meatloaf out of the oven. Actually, we took it out of the oven almost five minutes ago. I was letting it cool and rest for you. Um, the actual cook time for this one with the thickness that this was, was actually 40 minutes. I inserted, I have an instant read thermometer. I inserted it in and I pulled it out of the oven when it was 140 degrees. Now you're gonna notice the darkness and almost the caramelization to the sauce that's on here. That's exactly what you're looking to achieve. You notice the darkness here. How I achieved that, because it wasn't really quite there at 40 minutes, I put it into the, under the broiler, on a high broiler, for just a couple of minutes until I saw the sauce was all bubbling up and getting good and perfect looking. And I pulled it out, I've let it set, and that's where we're at. So, let's go ahead, take a slice off, and try this little puppy out, shall we? There we go, you can see the steam coming out. It looks lovely. Exactly what we're looking for here. Can you see that? You can see the onions and the parsley and all that inside of there. You can see our nice sauce dripping down. And let's cut into that and see how it tastes. It's gonna be hot. Mmm. Really good. You can taste the cider vinegar in there, the heat of the hot sauce, but you're tasting all the herbs, the lightness of this meatloaf mix. It's terrific. Check it out, try it. Once you try this, you won't want to go back to just plain old ground beef in your meatloaf. From Harris and Dave, the dads, Harris and Dave, thanks for joining us.